our ancestors be blessed forever. Oh Jesus Christ, our ancestor most high, you are the sign of our unity. Oh Holy Spirit, the breath of our life, in reside in us. Mama Mary, our mother and mother of all our ancestors, protect us children from hatred and division. Oh, our ancestors, you are our pride. Be with us and intercede for us. Oh, men, women, and children, come along, pray to God. Oh, children, come along, pray to God. Pray to our God. Our ancestor has descended here below. It would be madness to deride the spirits. The spirit of the air is something great, pursuing us over its wide plains. Come home and implore God to give life to us. Come all and receive life from God. Rain mixed with sunbeams will gain us life. Ask life for the flocks, the herds, and the people. Let us sacrifice what we have, that God may draw nigh, that the Father may give us life. Oh Father, oh Creator, I ask and help, I invoke thee, O oh my Father, to thee, Father, I turn, to thee, my God, I turn, O oh Father, I turn to thee, O oh God, my Father, I pray to thee, to thee, in time of communion, I address my plea. God recognizes my forbearance, who are reconciled with him. Purity of heart. Let us greet one another in the presence of God and our ancestor Christ. However, in all of you, 
oh God, we thank you for the kindness and love that you continuously show us for our ancestors. You alone has provided ample rain to our crops, water and fertility to our cattle, and you alone has provided the sun to ease our harvest. Accept therefore the offerings that we have brought in your holy shrine, built by our ancestors, in thanksgiving for your blessings towards us. Accept and bless our academic work at Hikima University College. Kindly protect us from our enemies, famine, diseases, and wars. In your mercy, accept our offerings and prayers. We are the children, accept our offerings and prayers.
Blessed, O oh Lord, the reading of the Holy Gospel according to our ancestor and faith, Matthew, the evangelist. May his blessing be with us all. When Jesus had entered the village of Nahum, an army captain approached him and appealed to him in these words, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the captain replied, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man and authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, with no one in these lands have I found such faith. Tell you, men will come from all over the world, from east and west, and recline at table with the elders, with uh, Elder Abraham, Elder Isaac, and Elder ja Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be from into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the captain, Jesus said, Go and let it be done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. The good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mulungu, Mulungulu, Imposi, Mwari, 
imana nzame nyame akuj zahanari andria manitra leza chuku in short the one with many names and no name we are yet again privileged to gather together again today and we are filled with gratitude for the opportunity of community participation and share it is good that we are all here. Indeed, for our elders in Congo say, those who are absent are always wrong. I mean, it's a very busy day today. I feel very honored to be asked to say a few words to this family. And I have chosen to speak on the theme that concerns us all as a community, assisted by the instructions of some senior elders in the church who have previously taught us. I will remind you of the challenge facing us as African Christians. It involves the call to add value to Christian life through African culture. The call to add value to Christian life through African culture. I think that the idea already addressed several times by senior elders and even today in the lecture deserves once again a moment of serious reflection for the sake of the life of the church in our continent. Yes, as we have heard said from our Ghanaian brothers and sisters, wise men and women indeed, when they say if the elders have left you a legacy of dignified language, you do not abandon it and speak in childish language. Remind us in Zen. Gold, silver, diamonds, these are precious minerals. For example, almost the entire world economy is pegged to gold. Cocoa, coffee, tea, these are refreshing drinks. More than two thirds of humankind enjoys one or the other of these drinks at one time or another. Mm. See. What would the day be without a cup of tea? Or should I say coffee? Mm. My mind goes to the Hekima students during break time. <laughs> <laughs> the clamor for that cup of coffee. Mm. But at the beginning of all, at the beginning, rather, all these are raw materials, valuable but nevertheless raw. To have the worth and regard they possess universally, they must be processed. And this simply means that value must be added to them. The African continent, which has been endowed by God with plenty of these gifts, is slowly waking up to this reality of adding value to its raw materials for world consumption. We hear that in Tanzania, for example, the President John Pombe Magufuli has decided to establish processing plants within the country for the gold and diamonds, the, the tanzanite and natural gas found in that territory. It should be the case with the cocoa in Ivory Coast, coffee in Kenya, tea in Uganda, and crude oil in Nigeria. I mean, all raw materials found all over Africa. 
should have value added to them. Is this not true? Yes, it is. Is this why our Malagasy brethren say truth is like sugar cane? It is always sweet, no matter how long you chew on it. It is still sweet. But here, are not concerned only or written primarily about material blessings. I'm neither a politician nor an economist. Not that these areas are not important, obviously. I'm merely taking them as indicators of the more vital challenge for us at Hekima, the relationship between our faith as Christians and our cultural ways of being human as Africans. <laughs> I'm concerned primarily about the relationship between our faith as Christians and our cultural ways of being human as Africans. Considering its history in our continent, couldn't the expression of our faith in Christ be refined and fine-tuned to be more in sync with basic African experiences that's adding value to it? Many of us are convinced that Christianity will remain like raw material here in Africa unless and until value is added to it, so to speak, by African religion. Now so, our Nigerian forebears affirm this thing. Other people's wisdom prevents the king from being called a fool. Earlier this month, my brothers and sisters, on Saturday the 9th, our universal leader, Mze Francis, presented the Joseph Ratzinger Prize to two prominent Catholics, Mr. Charles Margrave Taylor, a Canadian Catholic philosopher, and to Father Paul Beret, one of our own from Burkina Faso. <coughs> Father Beret, the first African to receive the award, is known particularly for his scholarship in scripture and for his contribution to developing African theology. We have many reasons to acclaim, be proud of, and honestly celebrate Father Beret as he struggles to add value to Christianity in Africa in the sense that I have outlined. St. Francis openly acknowledged this fact, presenting the Ratzinger Prize to Mr. Taylor and uh, to Father Beret. He explained that adding value to the Christian faith through theology has always been part of the tradition of the church adding value to the Christian faith through theology has always been part of the tradition of the church. It has always been, he added, a keen desire of Joseph Ratzinger, the theologian and pastor, who never closed himself off in this embodied culture of pure concepts, but gave us the example of seeking truth where reason and faith intelligence and spirituality are constantly integrated. All the arts and disciplines thus cooperate in contributing to the full growth of the human person, which is to be found ultimately in the encounter with the living person of Jesus Christ, the incarnate logos, the revelation of the God who is Makes me remember the words of our Ugandan elders, men and women who have gone before us. The scarcity of source will not make you eat its power. To offend this more, our Cameroonian brethren join in the same. There are no shortcuts. In climbing 
den Baum schön. On the same challenge of adding value to the faith by means of theology, and Saint Francis made it clear on that day, with Taylor, with Taylor's work in mind, that it is a duty for theology to be and remain in active dialogue with cultures. It is a duty for theology to be and remain in active dialogue with cultures, even as they change over time and evolve differently in various parts of the world. These are words of Jose Francis. At the same time, he said, it is a condition necessary for the vitality of Christian faith for the church's mission of evangelization, for theology to be in constant dialogue with culture. Let us come back home. As our Kenyan brethren will tell us, the fear of God is not in wearing a white turban. Not at all. Turning directly to Father Beret, or to Father Beret's work for Africa, St. Francis addressed the African church, saying, I am pleased on the occasion of this award to express my appreciation and encouragement to all those committed to inculturation of the faith in Africa through the original and different <coughs> study. I am pleased, Mr. Francis said, on the occasion of this award to express my appreciation and encouragement to all those committed to inculturation of the faith in Africa through the original and different study. In the first centuries of Christianity, Northern Africa gave the church great figures, Tertullian, Cyprian, Augustine, but the spread of Islam, followed by centuries of colonialism, prevented a true African inculturation of the Christian message until the second half of the last century. Contemporary African theology is therefore still young, though dynamic and full of promise. Father Beret provides an example of this by his work on the interpretation of the Old Testament text in a context of oral culture, thus bringing to fruition the experience of African culture. He has committed himself, that is Father Beret, to making the sinners that he participated in known, understood, and received in the African context. Of course, all hail to our brother, Beret. Makes me remember the words of the Madewan people, the words of the elder, becomes sweet and true something. Recalling the words of his predecessor on the stool of Rome, St. Paul VI, in the Apostolic Exhortation Evangelium Oceani, St. Francis reminded the church in the world that evangelizing means bringing the good news into all the strata of humanity and through its influence transforming humanity from within and making it new. This is true for all cultures, he said. Access to redemption for humanity in all of its dimensions should be sought with creativity and imagination. This search can be expressed with appropriate language in all areas and spaces in which men and women live their pains, joys, and hopes. As our Benin ancestors will say, anyone who plants a tree before they die has not died in vain. Our Benin ancestors tell us, anyone who plants a tree before they die has not died in vain. This is where we are. This is the challenge of Hekima, 
or this is the challenge that a team is facing, none of us can, uh, can run away from it and save our faces. On that November 9th, uh, 2019, the Francis was explicit. In the variety of cultures, diverse across time and space, one can and should always seek the way to God and the encounter with Christ. In the variety of cultures, diverse across time and space, one can and should always seek the way to God and the encounter with Christ. This has been and remains the work to which Professor Taylor and Father Beret have dedicated themselves to be co-workers of the truth. The Namibian mothers and fathers tell us, those who live together cannot hide their backside from one another. And the South Africans will affect this by saying, the jungle is bigger, much bigger than the elephant. Are African cultural values all the lie? Are African ways of approaching the divine all superstition? No one here, I hope, would dare affirm such blasphemy. After all, something good, actually the supreme good, did come from Nazareth, in spite of the negative attributes attached to that place. Many good things can and do come from the African continent, where humanity's proto-ancestor Jesus Christ himself <coughs> spent some of his life on earth. Indeed, Pliny the Younger may have been right. Ex Africa semper aliquid nothing. There is always something new out of Africa. Let alone Pliny. One can think of the beautiful Zimbabwean words. A willing baby that does not cry aloud will die at the mother's back. That's not all. They continue by saying, you do not tell a child, a boy or girl, who is hungry, that you give him or her food. Yesterday. You are done, Jose. Let us reflect on the words of wisdom, death that you have sent to us this day. Before the harvest, our elders told us 
in grief that on the evening when the enemies were to betray our chief ancestor, he was already aware and so he gathered his children around the fireplace, took some food in his heroic hands, gave thanks to his father in heaven and shared the food among his children, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. When they had finished eating, our chief ancestor took the visitor's uh, wooden cup filled with a well brewed drink, gave thanks to his heavenly father, and gave it to his children, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup, my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. As we are remembering your great deed for us, Jesus, help us be, un be unified in our cultural diversity.